Hello, my name is J.R. Tallman, and today I'll be taking you through how to configure invoice groups in NetSuite. Invoice groups in NetSuite is essentially consolidated invoicing, which is the number one requested feature in Suite Ideas, so it's been a long time coming. I'm currently using the 2020.2 release preview account in my environment, and the first thing we're going to do to get this rolling along is to enable the feature. This can be found underneath Setup, Company, and Enable Features. Underneath the Enable Features, you can go to the Transactions sub-tab here, look for the Billing Field Group, and within the Billing Field Group, you'll see a checkbox that says Invoice Groups. Go ahead and check that off. This is one of those features that once you check it off, you can go ahead and uncheck it if necessary. Uh, but I would recommend doing this in a Release Preview account or a Sandbox environment once you're upgraded to the 2020.2 version of NetSuite. Once that's checked off, you can go ahead and save underneath Enable Features. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Auto-Generated Numbers underneath Setup, Company, and Auto-Generated Numbers, where this will enable invoice groups in NetSuite with what we just did. And if you go to the Documents Numbers sublist here, you'll see Invoice Group as a document number that is set up. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a prefix of INVGRP, but feel free to adjust as necessary or uh, keep blank if you don't want a prefix. I think it's uh, best practice to put a prefix so you can distinguish between records as well as when you're searching uh, using the global search in NetSuite. So, so far we've enabled the feature itself and we have looked at the auto generated numbers. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to a customer record in the system, and I've already set up a customer for this particular purpose, so I'm going to go, go ahead and global search my customer. And I'm going to go and edit the customer record itself, which is called Oracle-Invoice Groups. Once you enable the feature, underneath the Financial sub-tab, you'll see a new field called invoice groups. If this field is not showing, you will need to customize your form and add it where it's defaulted underneath the financial sub tab. What this will do is if it's checked off, it will automatically make your uh, sales orders and invoices that come off of those sales orders available for consolidated invoicing or what we're calling invoice groups in NetSuite. If this box is unchecked, you're still able to group the invoices on the sales order. However, this will just default it once we get to the sales order itself, which you'll see in just a moment. Once that has been set up, we're going to go ahead and create a sales order in NetSuite underneath Transactions, Sales, and Enter Sales Orders. I'm going to use that same customer here, which is Oracle Invoice Groups. And you'll notice that for invoice grouping field that was on my customer record, which was had invoice groups, it is automatically selected here because it was defaulting from the customer itself. However, if I did not have it checked on the customer, I could go ahead and check this off and that will make it available for our consolidated invoicing or invoice grouping. So make sure this is checked off if we want this to be available. And then I'll go ahead and add an item down below here for my sales order that will go ahead and invoice subsequently. I will save the sales order. From here, I will go ahead and bill this particular sales order. And on the invoice, you'll see the same field that I had on the sales order for invoice grouping. This is inline edited, so I cannot change it on this particular invoice. It's defaulting from the sales order itself. And one thing to keep in mind with this new release 2020.2, uh, invoice grouping will not work with standalone invoices. So you must create your invoices from sales orders. Uh, you can also see my customer is inline text. And once this looks good, I'll go ahead and save the invoice itself. Once saved, there is a new status here. Uh, instead of just saying open as regular NetSuite would do, this shows open dash ungrouped. Is that it's ungrouped for right now? We're gonna need to do another step to group it with additional invoices that we want to be consolidated. 
If we do not want this invoice to be marked for grouping within an invoice group or available for our consolidated invoicing, we can go ahead and click the button that says unmark for grouping and it will uncheck the for invoice grouping checkbox here. But I'm gonna keep this like it is and we're gonna go and create one more invoice in the system for this same particular customer. Just like before, we'll make sure the for invoice grouping box is selected. And I'll go ahead and use a different item for this particular sales order when we invoice it. So let's go ahead and use a license. And we will go ahead and invoice this particular order. Just like our first invoice, the status is open-ungrouped. And now comes the fun part where we can group these invoices together and print or email to our customer to pay against that group uh, and accept payment. This can be found underneath transactions, sales, and group invoices, which is a new feature once we enable that uh, invoice groups in the system. So let's go ahead and click on group invoices. And we have some filters up at the top here with the customer invoice date on or before. And then there is a key option here that says group by PO. If this option is selected, what this would do is it would group based on the PO number in the system, uh, which originally came from our sales order. So if we go ahead and check that, it will group. Otherwise, if we keep this unchecked, it will also um, not group by the, the PO, which I'll have uh, by default here. Now, none of these um, particular invoices that I've created have a PO number. They have the same customer. However, two of the invoices, the last two that I just created uh, within this particular demo, these do have a different address with the billing, and that's the reason why you see a two down below here. So if I were to select all of these particular invoices to group, um, the first three would create a group invoice that would show me on our PDF uh, that would, the customer would pay against. And then the last two here would also show me one invoice group in the system. So that's right, the reason why we have this group indicator. Uh, and depending on if you have PO numbers here, uh, by checking or unchecking this, this will update the group indicator. So this is a good indicator of how it's gonna be presented when we actually create the invoice group in the system. For this particular demo and configuration, we're gonna go ahead and select the last two that I just created in the system here, which have a group indicator of two. Standard NetSuite, you can go ahead and customize this to add additional columns if necessary, uh, and then go ahead and click on Submit. Once this is submitted, this will take us to a process status page, which is uh, pretty similar to most pages within NetSuite that are doing a process, and it will give us a, hopefully, a complete with zero errors, which it did here. So let me go ahead and cl click on complete. And it will take me into a new record type of invoice group, and you can see INVGRP3, because I gave that our auto-generated number. Once on the invoice group itself, you can see a new status here. It says open. Uh, I can edit this invoice group, which I'll do in just a moment. Uh, but moving down to our details, this has our detailed lines of our first two invoices or sales orders that got generated. So I have two different line items. And depending on the view that you wanna see, you can go ahead and change this from AR to the detail level to the summary level. Uh, if you wanna get uh, very granular or just really see the top level information based on those invoices. You can also remove from the group. So if I were to consolidate um, multiple invoices, which I have here, I can click the button that says remove from group and it will allow me to remove particular invoices from this group by just going and selecting off of the first checkbox or the second checkbox and clicking the remove from group. Just like any record at NetSuite, you can go ahead and edit this and uh, fill in additional information, whether that be a memo, uh, changing up the PO number if applicable, and you can also delete this record depending on your permissions. For my particular instance here, I think this is good, so I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel, and I'll show you how the PDF looks. This does use advanced HTML PDFs that are preferred in the system. 
Uh, right now, I have it set to be uh, detailed. So if I hover underneath Actions and Print, this will open up that PDF, uh, which I've slightly customized. Uh, and so you can see here, it gives us the primary information, our invoice group summary, and then the actual detail level with my particular items that I have within those invoices. If you don't like this detail level um, showing on your PDF, you can just show the summary. So it's really up to you on how you want to customize the PDF itself with the invoice group. If we go ahead and take a look at the invoices themselves now, you can now see the status instead of saying open dash ungrouped, it is now open dash grouped. So this will show on both of my invoices that I grouped in the system. Uh, and then I can click remove from group if I still want to uh, do that. Um, however, I'm not gonna do that in this particular instance. Finally, on the invoice group at the top, you can go ahead and uh, email this if you would like, just like your standard email capabilities of NetSuite. Uh, this particular invoice group is not a GL impacting records. The GL impact comes from the individual invoice groups down below. To accept a customer payment for an invoice group, you can go ahead and click that blue button here. Or to use native NetSuite functionality, you can go hover over transactions, customers, and accept customer payments, just like you would in NetSuite. And from here, we'll go ahead and select my customer that I have used with my invoice group. And what you'll notice once we enable this feature is there is a new column here that says Group 2 down below as a column, and this will allow you to accept the payment for that invoice group. So I not only see my reference numbers of my individual invoices, but I also see my reference number of my group two invoices down below here. So let's go ahead and select a partial payment here um, for one of these particular invoices and save this. And then we'll take a look at our status of the invoice group as well as our underlying invoices. All right, so this has been applied. So let's go ahead and take a look back at our invoice group in NetSuite on our transactions, sales, group invoices, and list. Here is our invoice group. And you can see already our status shows open dash partially paid as the name here. And then down below, um, if we go to our invoices themselves, this particular invoice is paid in full because I accepted that full payment for this particular invoice. And then the second invoice, if I go to it, will say open dash grouped. This concludes how to use invoice groups in NetSuite version 2020.2. I hope you have enjoyed this video and please like and comment uh, down below if you have any additional future suggestions for training videos uh, that I do. Thank you.